Change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, Tim Van Orden, coming to you from the wilds of Woodford, Vermont. <laughs> it is April 23rd, and I am out doing a slog uh, north of Woodford State Park. And I wanted to make another What I've Learned video because I'm having an experience in this moment, and I'm also present to some comments that have been coming in. So, as I think about those comments, and as I deal with what's happening to me in the moment, I thought I'd assemble them into some kind of discussion. So, what's happening to me is that my eyes are burning. <laughs> it's a sunny day. And there's not a lot of leaves. Actually, there's no leaves on the hardwood trees and there's not many conifers to offer protection. And the sun is reflecting the light up into my eyes. And an interesting tidbit is that mountain climbers, uh, where do they get the worst sunburn? The roof of their mouth because they're breathing they're like and the sun is reflecting off the snow up into the roof of their mouth they can also burn the insides of their nostrils they burn the tops of their eye sockets but it's worse than the mouth because there's no protection in there from sun uh, so I don't wear sunglasses when I run I like getting natural light in my eyes I think that's important so I'm out here realizing that my eyeballs are burning. And how that relates to some comments that I've been getting is this. I'm running through an environment that has been smoothed over by months of snowfall. So this is essentially somewhat flat ground, or at least it's smooth. Uh, the rocks and the roots and the stumps and the low underbrush that will grab your feet and trip you are largely covered. So it's much easier for me to <clears throat> do what I'm doing right now, which is to bushwhack. I started on a snowmobile trail and almost immediately ran into the woods because I saw a hill and I wanted to run up the hill. So I did, and then got to the top and looked in the distance and saw another one, and ran to that one. So I'm just wandering. But I can only do that this time of year when there's a really dense snowpack covering up the ground and the obstacles underneath. Once the snow melts, I'm on the trails. I don't bushwhack anymore, it's too dangerous. So I take advantage of this time of year to just wander through places that I otherwise would never get to see. So, how this relates to the comments and my eyeballs being burned is that when we have challenge in our life, when we have a winter, in our life, lots of snow falls, lots of hurt falls, lots of evidence of our inadequacy or our inferiority or the, the untrustworthiness of other people or of a particular person. There's lots of data falling, lots of snow, lots of cold falling, accumulating until the complexity of the world is fully covered until the variability and diversity of the world that we're moving through is fully covered and it becomes flattened out. It becomes smooth and we can now travel in ways, conceptually, that we couldn't travel before. We can make connections between things, between people, between events, between places in ways that we couldn't make before because this accumulating data, this mental snow that has fallen 
has now built bridges and made travel from A to X possible. We simply say, oh, I can see it, it's clear, and I can, I can go there. But we don't realize that the only reason that we can go there is that the earth is covered in snow. Our mental landscape is covered in snow and, and things are flatter and smoother. But more importantly, they're brighter. So this snow doesn't just make conceptual travel easier. It doesn't just make jumping to conclusions easier, but it also reflects back. It takes whatever light there is and it reflects it back at us. And it lights up the world in a way that hasn't been lit up uh, prior to the depression. We see it so much more clearly. But is it reflecting the world? The light that's shining back on my face, is it reflecting the truth of the ground that I'm moving on? Or is it simply reflecting my own snow? My own evidence that's been accumulating? My own beliefs that are being generated in the midst of trauma, in the midst of that hurt? And I now need to protect myself, so let's accumulate, accumulate, accumulate evidence to the point where it's safe to travel again. But my travel is not going to be through the world. My travel is going to be through my conceptual winter landscape. Uh, a world that doesn't actually exist. Uh, so this is a metaphor. And this run uh, is helping me to see this. So in the real world, on the real ground, this is really useful. But in our conceptual worlds, it's dangerous. And the biggest part of that danger, again, back to the light, what's being reflected is not the world. The world's hidden under that snow, under our layers of evidential protection. So we stop seeing the world. And what we do see is so much brighter than the world ever was. When this snow melts and the, the leaves come out and, and the ground is orange and brown and a little bit of green and maybe black and gray, it doesn't reflect nearly as much light. But right now, in our winters, where everything is smooth and, and flat and explained by the data that we collected, then that light is just blinding and my eyes hurt and I can't even look. It's like, I don't want to go out in the world because holy cow, I'm just blinded by the reflection of my collected evidence. I'm blinded by my confirmation bias that the world is a dangerous place. The world is an evil place. The world is full of untrustworthy people. It's full of one or two dimensional people that are all alike and they're all out to get me or they're all idiots, or there's a system, this one or two dimensional system that's out to get me, to oppress me, and, and I go outside and this blinding light is reflected back up at me and it's burning me in really vulnerable places. It's not affecting me the way that normal light does. It's affecting me in places that are really vulnerable and that I don't even think about it. It's, it's touching me in ways that regular light doesn't. And so, if I do choose to go out in it, it just, it amplifies my beliefs. Because it's all I see, and it's so bright, and it's so blinding, and it, I have to squint. It's like, oh my God, not only is this true, but holy cow, how could I not see that before? But what you're seeing is not the world. What you're seeing is your accumulated winter evidence reflecting light in a way that reality never could. Simplifying the world in a way that just isn't possible if you could see the complexity of the ground underneath this snowy evidence. But sometimes it's fun to slide through, right? It's fun to go down rabbit holes. It's fun to 
to use that evidence to feel righteous, to slide down the slope, down a slippery slope into a belief that I'm the only one that can see this. Why can other people not see this? It is so bright, it is so blinding. It is so true and I'm so present to it and I'm, I'm satisfied with that as I slide down those slippery intellectual slopes in my mind and become more and more set in my ways. And the more set I become, the more snow falls and the more snow falls, the more the light is reflected and, and the more I only see my truth, the more I only confirm my truth and the more I am motivated to validate that truth even further and to feel righteous and satisfied and eventually to completely remove myself from the world because the world is intolerable. But you're not in the world. You're not seeing the world. You're not moving through the world. What's reflecting back is just your pain, not the world. So this is where ideology comes from. Uh, there are people that say something has to be done. I'm looking at this brightly reflected uh, virtual world and something has to be done. Somebody has to, to do something and it's gonna be me. I'm gonna be the one that's gonna fix it. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. And they create an ideology and they, they get people to see the snow and, and there are plenty of other people that are in winters in their lives and they're in the midst of the snow and and so yeah you're right holy cow it's so clear it's so bright it's so obvious and all these other sheep they just can't see it they can't see what we see but what you're seeing is not real it's just the mask of pain it's it's a world that's been oversimplified and explained by pain and you can travel through it so easily you can make these ideological connections so easily, like I'm doing right now, flying through trees that I could, I could never move through here. In fact, right here, it looks like there's a, a spring and a bit of a swamp in the woods. I couldn't run through here without having my shoes sucked off by the mud. But right now, it's really easy. Uh, because the snow offers me protection from the truth underneath. So those are my thoughts for today, that if you're blinded by the, the cruelty of the world, if you're blinded by the atrocities that you see on the news or on Facebook, or if you're blinded by your own pain, realize that what you're seeing is not the world, but an oversimplified, amplified, tiny slice coming from the voice of pain that has blanketed the world and in some ways made it more comfortable uh, because you have greater certainty and, and the human mind needs to feel certain about things and it's really easy to be certain when things seem so bright, seem so clear and then even though the world is going to hell, at least you're not a sheep, at least you're not just a cog in the wheel or a number you're out of the system, you're free. You're free to move through the, the winter of your mind and slide down your slippery slopes. If you find value in this conversation, uh, leave a comment. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like this channel, subscribe and click the bell icon so you get the updates. Uh, whenever I post a video. And if you want to be a part of this process, sign up on Patreon, a buck or two a month. And you help me create more content and you help me create the team that I am working on. And uh, yeah, you, you just, you help. And I'm really grateful for that. So I'm gonna put the camera away now and wander. I'll see you soon. Bye. I've been noticing all of these moose scars where moose pull the bark off trees. Uh, here's a big one. 
there. This is what they eat in the winter. They just take the bark off the trees. And then I came across, whoa, a big pile of moose poop and some moose hair. And then I was about to walk away when I see very fresh bear tracks. Those guys are, I would say, based on the melt, they're probably less than an hour old, which means somewhere up ahead of me is a bear that is awake. Um, and that's the direction I have to go to get back to the car. So let's uh, play avoid the bear. It's one of the most challenging workouts I've done in a while. Uh, I'm going to post a bear video. Uh, I shot this footage about a month ago and I wasn't sure if I was going to post it because I don't know how I feel about it. But it happened, it's happening, uh, so I'm going to share that. Next video, tune in. Post run, monk pack, go go squeeze, kale chips. Yum!